over the past two nights, we've shown you the best and worst places to be on land during an earthquake. But what happens when an earthquake shakes the ocean floor? And who's watching out for us? Dave Malkoff has more in that on part three of our special series, Earthquakes. Are you ready? Somewhere out there, a sophisticated network of sensors is constantly looking for the next big quake or monster wave. How high the water surges. Chris Simpson is with the city of Los Angeles, and lately he's had his eye on a disaster scenario coming from Alaska. Uh, the large earthquake would trigger a sudden rise in water. So picture a lot of water, and you could see up in, a, in the Alaska area, and that, uh, that surge, that tsunami surge, is going to start impacting Washington, Oregon, uh, Northern California and then into the Southern California area. So you're talking about a time span of about six hours based on our projections. It's happened before. This LA Times article is from 1964. An 8.8 .8 in Alaska sent a tsunami right into the northern coastal town of Crescent City. 11 people died that day. Today, while a sailboat on the ocean wouldn't even notice the tsunami passing underneath, sophisticated warning buoys would. There's also an official tsunami evacuation route for Los Angeles. Some of our major uh, evacuation routes, you're looking at Sunset Boulevard, Temesco Canyon, Canyon Road, and Chautauqua. It just cuts down on panic and it allows you to communicate to your family where you're going to be. As far as earthquakes go, seismologists at Caltech and USGS in Pasadena are testing shake sensors buried deep in the Earth's crust. They're starting an early warning technology. It's not fully operational yet, but it's in the test phase. This is very complicated technology, but based on a very simple concept. That concept is that nothing in this known universe is faster than the speed of light. No cheetah, no speeding bullet, no fighter jet, no earthquake runs faster than the speed of light. But you know what runs just about the speed of light or at the speed of light is electricity and fiber optics. That's light in a tube. Now, here's the concept. You put a probe way down deep in the earth where the shaking begins. And that shock wave of the earthquake takes about 10 to 30 seconds to get to the surface. It doesn't happen instantly, 10 to 30 seconds. But you know what happens instantly is at the speed of light, you can send a signal to the surface when the shaking begins before you get that shock wave. It tells the doctor to put down that scalpel, or maybe you can say, shut down the elevator. Right now, something's coming. Quick, I believe we got almost a half a minute in warning. Say, okay, we have an earthquake that we know has started and we can use that information to shut down important um, facilities. But that's years away. Right now, the warning lights only flash here in Pasadena. That's one of the problems with this methodology. The nearby people have to get really hurt for us to know that the earthquake's underway. They don't get any benefit out of this. This only would help on a farther away location. Those sensors are also expensive, putting the USGS in a tough spot. The system could be much better, if not here already if they had the money. I am a federal employee. Whatever taxes are given to us to do this, we will do the best we can with what we have. But you could do better with more federal funding for this. Well, sure. That's always true in science. Dave Malkoff, KTLA 5 News. Fascinating stuff. And of course, everybody asks, what really should you do right. in the event of an earthquake? We ask this all the time. Right. And there are many answers to that simple question. Tomorrow night, Dave will show us some of the must-haves to help you and your family survive under some of the most dire conditions. Again, that's tomorrow night here on KTLA. And